Okay, it's time for Off the Press, and Chris Kendewando, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, is joining us live this morning from Lagos. Good morning to you, Chris. Good morning. Thanks for having me this morning. Great to have you. Always a pleasure to have you. So let's just get straight to brass tacks. Punch newspaper. It's leading with FG denies subsidy return. More fuel stations shut. The riders NNPCL blames pockets of fuel queues on road delays and 25 refinery licenses idle over subsidy, says Chiari. Yes, um, you know, uh, this didn't talk a fear about uh, where subsidy or no subsidy is uh, recurring uh, this model, and uh, you have to understand the basis. Um, on May 29th, um, 2023, um, during the inauguration of the, the president, uh, the polar bear stated categorically that super subsidy is a sin of the past and uh, that this government is not going to be part of that. And uh, he talked about uh, corruption within the system and the, uh, for being the reason to remove super subsidy. And, uh, but prior to that, before the uh, expiration of the uh, regime of uh, President uh, Muhammad Buhari, that has already been put in place, and uh, it was supposed to last till the end of May or June uh, this year. But the President made that categorical statement, and that itself led to a lot of um, issues uh, within the economy. Um, well, and uh, we are told a few days later that uh, market forces was going to determine and the price of um, petroleum, as it were. And you can see that uh, within two weeks, we had two uh, price increments on petroleum products before the outcry uh, by Nigerians and also uh, the labor. And uh, subsequently, uh, not in it, there was no dying. But there have been increases uh, in the uh, prices of crude oil across the globe. So if you're going to be if prices of petroleum product is going to be determined by market forces, so you are expectedly you are going to expect that the prices of petroleum would have risen again after then because the price have shifted in the international market, which is why most people now believe that there's the federal government pays subsidy. I know other organization than Pegasus should know better. So if Pegasus came out through his president to say that uh, the federal government had resumed the payment of uh, uh, petroleum subsidy, then I would believe that. But uh, the NNPC came out yesterday to so say that, oh, there's no increase, there's no, that the first subsidy have not been uh, uh, re established or returned, and uh, there's nothing like that. But I cannot believe NNPC. NNPC is just one uh, out of so many oil companies in Nigeria since now. Don't forget that NPC has been privatized, so no longer a government agency. Okay. So it is a private company. It cannot represent uh, the, total, uh, the totality of the OE sector until the Ministry of Petroleum, as it were, comes out to give a categorical, a categorical statement. Or the President of the Federation, as well as all the through his uh, spokesperson, either the spokesperson to the President or the Minister of Information, to categorically say that yes. Uh, uh, subsidy has removed uh, once and for all, then uh, it would be difficult for me to be able to uh, believe what the NNPCL um, uh, uh, MD uh, is group, saying. Yeah, that is what it means as of now. Uh, <laughs> but good enough, there is no price increase after the last one. Mm -hmm. Good enough, we'll no price increase good yet. Yeah, exactly. good, yeah, because that was a major concern, you know. In fact, over the weekend, it was a major concern, which, of course, the NNPC uh, dispelled that Nigerians have no cause to worry that the, there won't be an increase in the pump uh, price of fuel. Well, so you do not believe him. Perhaps, I don't know, would, do you believe one other major statement he made that Nigeria would be a net exporter uh, of uh, petroleum products? Do you believe that? Do you think it's feasible? Do you think it's just a political statement? Well, I, I, I find it difficult to believe most of these uh, government officials because if you look at what happened since 2015, where the president promised that we are going to have revived all the refineries, that we're going to bid more, and um, till eight years of that government, no single refinery was revived. And um, despite the billions and billions of naira that was pumped into 
into uh, maintenance of those refineries. Well, uh, this government has come to say that the uh, uh, refinery will be on stream by um, December this year, then the others will already Kaduna next year. Um, I think that would be a pitch of salt, but um, let's wait and see. Sincerely, I'm not optimistic. If they do, all will language for Nigeria. Uh, but if they don't, it will be a surprise to me. So if you say that um, by 2024, Nigeria will be an exporter uh, of petroleum products, let me try to take it um, be a bit optimistic and also be a bit pessimistic. So I'm neither here nor there. I'll just sit in the, uh, on the fence and see how we... December is just about two months from now. Let's see the magic they're going to do and how that goes on. Yeah, but I'm sure even he himself won't be surprised if Nigerians do not believe him. Maybe because he said he won't speak much. A lot has been said already, and he doesn't want to give a date so Nigerians don't get offended. <laughs> because, I mean... A date, no. a date has already been given. It's not for him to give a date. 2024, a but not a specific date or month, but 2024. Yes, no. 2024 no. could be November 2024, no. October. No. I didn't yes, say, did you see a date? No, no, no. What I'm saying is that it, we have started setting the agenda. The first refinery will start production by December 2023. Yeah. So the other ones to say 2024. Yes, definitely has no date. So if they if we they be able to meet the target of uh, December 2023 for the for the first one, then. But what you have to ask yourself: What is the refining capacity of those uh, refineries, and what is our consumption level? Indeed. If we are just depending on those three. Uh, or four refineries, whether they can be able to refine enough products is yet to be seen. Then, whether it's also depending on the one of them that is yet to come on stream, maybe that is also what is factoring. Don't forget that Nigeria have about 25% equity in Dangote refinery, I mean the federal government. So, we can as well say that we also shareholders in Dangote refinery. We've been several times that uh, refinery supposed to have taken up, and the Dangote group have given all sorts of excuses. In fact, to the point that at which we have been given import licenses for petroleum products. So, if that is what the NMPC managing director is looking at, then uh, all well and good. But what Nigerians want to see is uh, these refineries working and this is a side, uh, is a side increase in petroleum product, which affects every facet of Nigerian life. Um, it can be cut short so that we can be able to revive our economy. But we want to see same in other sectors, not only in the petroleum sector. Yesterday, we were talking about uh, Ajokuta, uh, uh, Ajokuta uh, uh, Steel Company that um, the program was saying that is going to be projecting about 50,000 uh, jobs that will be created. And I say, not again, because that is how we have been shortchanged with all these promises. We are told one time that, oh, agriculture sector is going to uh, provide uh, employment for 10 million Nigerians. We never saw anything. We said it in other sectors. Let this government, this government, our government, not just this government, our all government, I mean government, not just Tinubu's government, just give, let just perform. Leave all these projections. If it happens, you can tell Nigerians, oh, what you see in the US is just say that every month the government will come and the Bureau of Statistics in the United States will say, we have created 250,000 50, jobs in November. And they have statistics to show you for it. But in Nigeria, I would just say rhetoric, created job for this, created job, and our um, employment level continue to rise on a daily basis. Yeah. Okay, well, moving forward, let's look at the other headlines on the Punch newspaper. Above the masthead, you have Israeli Hamas conflict. FG warns pilgrims against illegal trips. Lagos suspends airlifting. All right, and then uh, four consortia to fix dilapidated pipelines. That's still Melakiari. You want to touch on these two briefly, especially the Israeli Hamas conflict? It's getting hotter by the day. The war is yes. raging. The war is raging. Israel is, Israel is hell bent on getting revenge and getting their people back. Yes, the. Israel, uh, Israel uh, Palestine crisis has been, uh, has been in the in the uh, in the news for over 52 
uh, 60 years now. And it has always been that. Uh, I remember the seven days before. Yeah, but this time been... around, though, this time around, it appears to be somewhat different. I mean, just look at the way Israel was taken unawares. On a very special day, of course, they were taken unawares. And we know that Israel, when it comes to intelligence, who is better than Israel in the world? So for them to be taken unawares and the magnitude with which Hamas, you know, carried out this attack is quite strange. Matter of fact, Israel has just likened what happened to them to what happened in America, you know, 9-11. Yes, I was just trying to lay a foundation to this story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, I'm saying that it is just like what happened during the... Hello? The Israel. Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay. As well as Israel uh, uh, in over 50 years ago. And they have been strategic. The Hamas were just been strategic. If you, if you read the story of the Seventh Day War, it also happened on a Saturday, uh, on a, a Jew worship day. Saturday was a Jew worship day uh, in the region. And that is when the Israelis, a bit, uh, it's like our own Sunday here, where they lay uh, their guard and go around their businesses and the rest of them. But there was serious failure of intelligence on the part of um, the uh, of the Israeli military. Mm. They probably underrated the capability of uh, Hamas while taking off their eyes off the ball. And while they barricaded uh, 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 Gaza, they never knew that um, Hamas had been stockpiling rockets, arms, and the rest of them from whatever source, which they are, the U.S. and, the, and the, um, uh, the Israeli have come to say that uh, uh, they were stockpiled or we are supplied by Iran. But what happened on Saturday was tragic. That is the worst in the, in the history of, uh, of, uh, of Israel. Uh, it started by um, Hamas making an incursion into border lines uh, between Gaza and uh, is, uh, is the border line with Israel. And they moved into a, a there was a musical um, concert was, that was going on. Yeah. And they moved into that place and massacred over 260 uh, 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 people, young people. Mm -hmm. As of this month, the death toll has risen to about 1,000 uh, in, in, in Israel. And Israel has been retired, uh, has also been um, bombarding the whole of Gaza. Just this morning, the Prime Minister of Israel said that people should leave because by then they finish with Gaza. It will never be the same again. <laughs> but this is also, this, yes, what we have always said, and which some of us are political science students have always said that the solution to this problem is a two state uh, uh, solution to Israel. Why the Palestinians should uh, recognize the state of Israel and give it uh, its due recognition by allowing to exist, then the Israelis also should be able to look at the Palestinians and also make sure that. They also have their freedom. Yes, it can be. They are comparing it to apartheid and rest. And this goes beyond that because, on a continuous basis, if the Hamas or, or the, those in the Palestine continue to kill, uh, send bombs, and send all sorts of things into Israel, of course, it's, Israel is a, is a nation of freedom. They should be able to also defend itself. But this is the highest blow that have been dealt at um, Israel since in the, since uh, it became independent about seventy or seventy five years ago. And um, this, the uh, Prime Minister of uh, 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 Israel has just said, this is just the beginning. What they just done was just the first phase. Then there's a, the possibility that they're going to move in their ground through into the... But in all this, it's always the subject, civilians that will suffer. Because um, the rate at which people are being killed uh, is just a, uh, is enormous. And it's quite unfortunate that every now and then uh, we continue to see this. And we don't know whether this uh, conflict will ever come to an end. Because if probably if you also read the Bible, if a student of the Bible would have read that, uh, probably the, it was stated somewhere in the Bible that this conflict will continue until Jesus Christ come again or whatever. But I think it's something that can be solved if the parties in the conflict can be solved. But this is a very, very unprovoked attack on mm. Israel by Hamas. Yeah, and, and they uh, took Israel. they took a hundred of is of their people hostage, and they are threatening yeah, they said, Israel and they said, like if they do not and, stop and the bombardment, they are going to kill and, all of the hostages. Yes, they say that if um, Israel continues to bombard um, uh, civilian uh, settlements without warning uh, uh, that they are going to uh, bomb, uh, you know what Israel is normally do if they want to bomb any particular building, they send a warning, uh, a warning, uh, maybe about two, one minute, two minutes, so that people can evacuate that. But from what we have seen now, no more warning is sent. And they say that if Israel continues to 
bombard, uh, do that. That will start killing the hostages. So it's a very, very delicate. Israel will also be very careful in moving into Gaza uh, because anything they do will also hurt their own citizens that be held hostage. Over 100 um, people. And you know the way these guys go about it. They just scatter the, these um, hostages and use them as human shields. So uh, I don't know how it's, it's going to come out of this. But it's quite unfortunate. Yeah, very unfortunate. Unfortunate that you know civilians were targeted, uh, you know, during this uh, attack by Hamas in Israel. Okay, so let's move forward. Right on in front of the Punch newspaper, you have the picture of the slain Omobalanle Rahim, justice for one of your learned fellows that was slain. Um, what, what do you make of this? In fact, MBA has, uh, has uh, welcomed the death sentence for the killer cop. Yes, for us, it's, um, it's a victory for uh, for the for the lawyers and uh, for MBA. So, but I don't want to limit this to just the MBA or lawyers, uh, or learned uh, colleagues, as we call ourselves. Mm. Uh, it's a victory for justice uh, because the way and manner the uh, the policeman uh, shot and killed this woman on the Christmas on Christmas just Day, yeah, yeah, pregnant. Was, was like, in the presence of her husband and uh, I think her sister-in-law, whatever, and just brutalized it, unprovoked. There was no provocation, and um, that's uh, it, it, it. Questions the uh, ability and the mental state of some of our security agents, especially those in the police force, where a human being can just pull out the gun because we are giving a gun. Before then, don't forget that. Before then, within that Aja as is also, hmm. it was said that there's this notorious police station around there. There was a young boy that was also killed just about a week. Uh, within that, um, as is by that, uh, from that same uh, divisional police uh, office, mm -hmm. uh, within that, a young man that was just uh, going about it, somebody just, one of the policemen just put that thing, killed him. But uh, uh, justice came too fast for me, very fast, and that is what we call because it's just under one year, mm -hmm. and um, the court has been able to deliver judgment on this. And that's where some that dragged for almost five, ten years before judgment and this thing. So I don't know whether it's because um, she's our, our colleague, the lawyer, or what, um, what the Lagos State government were put to do because they were the prosecuting authority. Mm -hmm. But he has been sentenced to death. Um, but I can tell you that that will not be the end of the story. Uh, he may decide to go on appeal. And if he goes on appeal and loses at the court of appeal, he also really? decides to so he may be. Can yes, he appeal? He has the right. You mean the police? Yes. He, he will appeal or the police appeal on his behalf? He, the cop? He, not the, the cop. police. He, he has the right of appeal. Mm. Uh, it's a, a criminal offense. It's a capital offense. But he has the right of appeal at the court of appeal. If he loses at the court of appeal, he also has the right to go as far as the Supreme Court. So it doesn't end at just the High Court. So if we take up his appeal, then we have to wait for the uh, court of appeal to deliver a judgment on that. Then if you also that he has to go to the Supreme Court. Until the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court is the final agenda on issue like this. So but let's wait and see. But the fact is that he has been sentenced. And then, um, but the problem for me, uh, in as much as some people are against, we have so many people awaiting um, execution in our prisons, mm -hmm. and none have been executed. Then I then continue to doubt why we still have that provision in our constitution. So if you commit a crime. Then you pay for the crime. That is what's happening. Even the USD today, USD execute. In as much as with all their human rights records and the rest of them, you still see that USD um, execute um, people that are because that is the finality. If you continue to keep people that decide to kill um, uh, their fellow citizens and you just keep it in jail for them, then justice has not been served. Um, so it is left up for the um, governors because the governors are the ones that have the right to sign up on the death sentence for the execution. Mm. So one of the government tried it some years back, and that was Adam Oshimoda. We saw the article all over Nigeria, and that, that stopped other governments from signing. But if you are signed up and that you've been convicted of such heinous crimes, and you need to be prosecuted, then there's no need keeping anybody, mm. irrespective of what the human rights uh, people feel about it. I'm talking as an individual now, and not <laughs> somebody <laughs> that, <laughs> that, <laughs> that <laughs> a graduate of law. Hmm. Okay, Let, let's move to the Nation newspaper. The Nation newspaper leads with Tinubu. I'm focused on lifting Nigeria to greatness. And the writer there, SGF briefs president. Their stability 
under APC government, says Envoy. Well, it's a self-seeking, uh, uh, chest uh, beating, but uh, stability. How many months has this government been uh, be in the state? We are talking about um, how many months? About three months, uh, four months. So I don't know the. Any stability that does not take care of the, the, the interest of Nigerians. Why are politicians economic. like this, Chris? Uh, why yeah, do well, they do that? That's, that's why you know, stability. Huh? Like, why don't they just go and, and, and just say things the way yeah. they are? As you yeah, said, no, how the, long has the government come yeah. in place? I mean, with all that's going yeah. on in the country right now? Man, no, that's the difference between you and them, and between us and them. I've said it, and when a politician says, oh, man, no, as I just said, you could uh, it, it, before you answer me, please open the window by the studio there and check your time. Check your time. Whether it's actually money, because whether it's actually money or not. Those are politicians, you know, their rhetorics and the rest of them, they will always call us But that's what we they say it not, it is not what's on ground. I think this government should just sit down and face the realities and just uh, smell the coffee as it were. There are a barrage of problems facing Nigerians, especially the economy. The economy is biting so hard. Nigerians are finding it difficult to be able to uh, eat. They are finding it difficult to be able to live. And, and we have so much put on our necks. And if they can just remove it smaller, we know they cannot remove the boot totally. But let them release it small so that we can breed. Um, it's their situation across uh, across Nigeria. Some people find it difficult to eat on a daily basis. Uh, it has moved from 111 to 101 to 1. Now, that is now 000. Most Nigerians cannot eat. And there are promises made. Yes, we know that it's going to be difficult for them to fulfill all the promises as it were, but the basic one they should start fulfilling, uh, which it has to do with food, shelter, uh, road infrastructure, health, education. Nigeria does not ask for too much. Once they get the basic things, we, we don't have a way of complaining. You know, everything, we leave everything to God. Let them do the one they can do, and let's continue hoping on God to be able to do the rest for us. Indeed, Nigerians are just asking for the basics so that they can thrive. Nigerians are very hard-working people. They, they, Nigerians don't really need so much to, to survive. But, but when they find themselves in a situation where it seems as if they are being choked on all sides, it becomes a real big problem. And that is where government should come in and create a enabling environment for the people to thrive. Okay, uh, like yes, above the masthead on the nation newspaper, you have no return to petrol subsidy, says NMPCL. We will export fuel next year. We've talked about that. And then Christmas Day killer cop to die by hanging, uh, 3,296 on death row. You also talked about that. Then you have EU observers report created wrong impression, says Mike. Page 27 is where details of that can be found. And Kiamo says airlines must pay compensation for flight delays. <laughs> you want to talk about that one? Yes, that's a good one. If we can implement that, then that is good because that is the standard. Um, uh, IOTA, ACAO, um, uh, regulation on travel. If an airline supposedly uh, delayed your necessary, then you need to be compensated. There have been so many instances in Nigeria where you see airlines delaying um, their flight scheduled to, uh, for about five, six, up to, at times 10 hours. There have been instances where some people have been at the airport for 10 hours and then before they could fly. That is unacceptable. So um, that is wrong. The second part is also that if they delay you for more than one hour, then I have a right to um, get my refund and look for another airline that is fine. That is what they don't do here. Once you pay, they believe that once you paid, you paid. That should not be. Hmm. You have a right of fund, and that is what it should be. Because if you, you realize that, you know, these guys are rich. If for whatever reason you miss your flight, they say you forfeited your, your ticket. But if the delay is from their end, then they, they look the other way. So uh, the Minister of Aviation, Mr. Skiyamo, said, I hope we can work the talk. As it were, and make sure that um, some of these regulations that uh, are put in place, uh, we cannot be able to continue to behave. The airline operators cannot be able to continue to behave. There are so many times that people have um, missed uh, their flights um, because of the appointments. Uh, because the essence of uh, flight is because you are, you are time conscious, you are time conscious, or else you just be on the road. 
I want to go to Abuja because I'm time conscious. I believe that within one hour I can be able to get to Abuja. I can finish whatever I'm doing in Abuja. That I don't want to stay. I can come back instead of um, um, picking up a bill in a hotel. Uh, but a situation where people just get to the airport and all they will just say, oh, we have to tell you due to logistic reason. What is logistic reason? What is so logistic about this? Their reasons that okay. they always tell us everything. So, yes, we're talking for logistic, logistic reason. But the what, if the, it, what, what if the weather is bad? What if the weather is bad? And they're no, just taking the precautionary measures no, 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 to no, ensure that you arrive time. safely? I mean, no, man, it's not every time weather. Which one? <laughs> Even dry season. What are, what are they in this event? That is not, if it's weather, there's nothing you can do about it because mm -hmm. it's a convention. It's convention across uh, across the, the globe. Even the regulations say that when the weather is not better. But this one is not. They will tell you that the plane we are expecting from wherever has not arrived. Mm -hmm. And this one, this one, and this one. And that is that becomes a norm. And you finally enter their plane after waiting for about five hours or six hours. They give you one small pure water. I said, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, and the one, one of pop. <laughs> so, so it's very oh annoying. So I think to try. Mm -hmm. And you know the, that it's the cost of a flight in Nigeria is becoming very, very expensive. One one route uh, uh, flight in Nigeria is about eighty thousand to ninety thousand. No matter how short the distance. Yeah, there was a time when they used to give jollof rice, even though the jollof rice yeah. wasn't anything. There was a time. There was a time. Jollof rice was a time. <laughs> 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 was a time. <laughs> <laughs> if I some wait, so wait. After when you pass in back, this uh, back, the guy give that small pure water. And that's why I say thank you for flying with us. You know, good. So, <laughs> okay. If you delay me, they should be able to give me apple. <laughs> to hold you for 24 hours. <laughs> All right, so Israel lays siege to Gaza and then 2.3 million to vote in Liberia poll. Let's talk about Liberia. Yes. What, what do we know yes. about what's happening there? Yeah, I think the, it's, the election is holding today, like yes, today. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, President Jojua is going for a second term and uh, he's still for position as it were. Uh, from the opposition candidates. And uh, they've been campaigning rigorously. Uh, most like, Liberians believe that George, uh, George Opiawaya, the former World Footballer of the Year, has not lived up to expectation mm. for the promises. But he's also an African politician. He's not, in fact, politicians are politicians anywhere you find them in the world, whether in America, only that our own. People say they are going to race to power 10. <laughs> uh, <laughs> because we don't have a form of check and balances. In the advanced world, they have a, check, a way of checkmating this thing. Look at what happened in the United States last week. The Speaker of the House of Representatives was removed because his colleagues felt that he was not, um, he was not performing. And it was a bipartisan uh, um, uh, remover, uh, just from the Democrats and about eight from the Republican Party. And they removed him. And that was it. And by this week, by tomorrow, I think they should be electing another uh, speaker for the United States of America. So we have our clauses here in Africa and in Nigeria, where it's has said that you can recall anybody or impeach it, but they never use that. So they the America, use um, that. Liberians, Liberia is the, is, the, is the oldest democracy in the whole of Africa. I think they got their independence about uh, 1890 or, 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 or whatever. It's the oldest um, independent country in the whole of Africa. And they'll be going to the pool today and uh, it will be a tough one for will this be judge where second term i can't i can't remember right now this is second term yes this is second term that's this is second term the, oh. don't forget that she took over uh, mrs salif yeah, uh, salif yes that is uh, Liz johnson and this is second term and um uh, i hope that he gets it and uh, to to bed uh so many of he them are foreign observers today. Yeah, but, you know, I'm, I'm surprised that, you know, this is the report on where. Because, you know, when he was campaigning back then, some of us here in Nigeria thought, oh, he would make a good leader for his people. So to hear that, you know, his people are disappointed is, is, is a major shocker. You know, that's what I said. I said African politicians, they promise you heaven and earth. At the end of it, when they get there, they don't be, and you, they don't be delivered. Don't forget that before that, he also contested against... Uh, Salif and lost. So it, the, when it was now when the when he now um, contested the last time that he won, and there was so much hope because one most Liberians felt that um, he's exposed. Uh, he has seen the way it is done in the 
in the other part of the world. Yes. And um, that will be able to and deliver it's young. Better. You know? Yes, and you as well, but most Liberians believe that uh, he, he, he was not able to deliver on his promises. But that could also be due to, to certain, with so many factors. I don't know, I don't know the GDP of uh, Liberia. I don't know what they export. I don't know what they make. I don't, I don't know their what uh, what their general uh, uh, what they make uh, in terms of um, their GDP. Uh, if he has the resources to be able to deliver on some of those promises, whereas to so many Liberians, they say he made promises that he couldn't fulfill. Whether that will not translate in his losing the election, it's yes, to see. So we wait and see. And as I was saying before, um, so many observers are already in, uh, international observers are already in Liberia. Um, former INEC uh, chairman uh, is leading a, a part of um, some international observers. Then also former president, Good uh, uh, Dr. Jonathan, is also leading another uh, international observer side. So all of them are already in uh, Liberia. And that's what uh, happens um, today after the election. All right. There's something I almost missed here on, on the strip here on top of the main headline on the nation. You have Tinubu appoints Feladu Rotoye for others as aides. I didn't hear about that. Feladu Rotoye? As oh, eight? of course. Oh, you didn't hear about it. Yeah, I it did was it. So. Oh, oh, wow. No, he was appointed. He was appointed, and one of us also, Linda Ibe uh, of Chinese Television, was also appointed a uh, special assistant to the president. And uh, we have to work within the uh, media uh, directorate of um, the president. Uh, there was a particular, I don't, I can't remember what it was uh, given, but he's a special assistant uh, to the president. Uh, uh, I was surprised by that uh, this thing because <laughs> Bruto Yu is somebody that's very critical of government and has a kind of vision, somebody even that contested. He contested, yes. Yeah, so I'm surprised. I don't know what he's going to do with a special assistant. As an best. aide. Uh, yes, but ordinarily, if it's another client, there's nothing wrong uh, with anybody accepting to serve. Service is service, irrespective of where you find yourself. Whether he'll be able to uh, be allowed to uh, his uh, his ingenuity or yeah, this thing will be allowed to face this all well and good because it's one thing to uh, to appoint you as a as special assistant or special advisor, but it is also for you for the president whoever appoints you to also accept your advice. So that has always been the the problem in Nigeria. So mm. when you appointed special advisor in Nigeria. Uh, is sometimes it's seen as it's, sometimes it's, most times it's seen as job for the boys, you know, creating something for exactly. the boys. That's what I'm saying. So they, I don't see what they're advising now, what they're going to do. But uh, congratulations to him. Let's see how it goes. I think it's one of our five or six appointments. Indeed, and congratulations to Linda Igbe of AIT. Yeah. All right, so yeah. South of channels. Of, of channels. Yes. Linda Igbe, is it channels or AIT? Should be AIT. It's channels. It's, it's, no, no, it's channels. It's oh, channels okay. Now. Congratulations to her. So, Southeast Senate Caucus renews push for additional ministerial slots. Your people are looking for more ministerial slots. What say you? At least we don't pass that bridge. At least we don't pass that <laughs> There's nothing to discuss there, but no good or not. That's okay, good. let's <laughs> let's good. let's move forward then to the Guardian newspaper. Scarcity of diagnostic services cripple cancer care in Southeast states. Your state is still in the news. Um, you yes, have um, is, is there a big story here on the Guardian newspaper, yeah. and they are saying that 22 million residents of Southeast have limited cancer diagnostics machine in public tertiary facilities residents depend on private facilities or referred to other regions yeah it's, it's a very sad one it's mm -hmm. a very sad development um, um the health facilities in south is it's, uh, it's so terrible that uh, most often they're not industrialized that uh, most people in the south have to go to other regions like south south people come to the southwest and take us uh, for diagnosis on um sicknesses that they that can easily be handled and cancer is one of them if you know the rate of people that um, get um, have cancer across the globe then it becomes a problem um, cancer is no longer a death uh, sentence if you can be able to detect early enough and it mm. can be treated so people have so many people have a bed that is the problem in this area and that's what we're talking about infrastructure development we want to say that um, not be specific in the south our government in the south is a problem 
that was a classical example of what um, the former governor of my state, Richard Sokorocha, did in Imo State. Mm. He bamboo does and make us to believe that you see, he built one general hospital in every local government. Mm. If you see the one he built in my village, uh, close to my village, you'll be shocked. Just a building, there's no window, there's not, <laughs> no door, nothing. Just the building. Yes, it is a seven hour. If you know my place, it's at a place called Seven and a Half. You know, go um, just before my village. You know. That structure just remained there and nothing. I was shocked. In fact, when they, when he mentioned that, when he started, I was one the one of those that praised to high heaven. Then the people I was talking, I was talking about, oh, Richard uh, is uh, is doing very well and health and the rest. Of it. I don't know. Say now, now one chance now we have. Uh, well, bet the between that, day. between that and the statue of uh, Zuma, which one pains you the most? <laughs> No, 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 this one, no, this is a hedge fast. Is that, that's <laughs> like, I was the only one that stood, Richard did not to move in that uh, status. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, so it is the, the true, that is the true situation of the uh, head um, facility in the Southeast. And I hope that uh, Southeast used to boast of uh, some of the best hospitals in, in those days. Um, in, 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 in Nadia State, there used to be one general hospital at a place called Amachara in Umaya. Mm. Very, very unique. University of Nigeria and Soka used to have one of the best teaching hospitals hospital in the, I'm sure you may not remember the University of Nigeria and Soka teaching hospital it used to be it ranked among uh, almost in equal status with uh, that of Lut and uh, UI UI but I don't know the situation so what is happening uh, to the southeast I mean yesterday I saw in the news that uh, Avia state governor bought computers for the judiciary I'm like really is this news well, to them it's news now. It's news. The fact remains that uh, Abia State, even for Abia State, you could remember that for almost one year during the time of Okese, okay, the doctors were on strike. Yes. Almost one year. You remember the number of months that it was um, doctor's salary. So that is the, the terrible situation. And I hope so that, let's hope um, that OT in Abia State would make a change because Abia State is one of the states in the South is that I'm really very worried about. Well, I used yes, to be yeah. until now that we have someone that appears to know what he's doing and sincere. Don't celebrate yet. I don't celebrate yet uh, because there are so much procedure. When they come, they come with so many promises and the rest of them. At the end of it all, they fail to deliver. So let us just wait and see what they can be able to do. I'm sure I know that the job is enormous. But Abia State is one of the should be one of the most viable states in the whole of the South. It because if you be. know the economic situation, economic potential in Abba. Mm -hmm. And the area of markets. Yes. And so many other places in Nigeria state, uh, you, you, you'll be surprised. The same thing with Anambra state. Mm -hmm. uh, look at what uh, I would, uh, with the, with the hope with which we held um, uh, Charles Soludo when he was coming in Anambra state. Oh, he's, he has a magic man to be able to look at it. But go back to Anambra state and ask yourself, maybe about three years after Charles Soludo, what is it? Uh, what has been the change? Had the, what has been the solution? They say it's do with the solution. Has it provided the necessary solution? <laughs> that is the problem with governance as it were in the South. But that's how sector should be looked into. So it should be looked into. Exactly. It should be looked into. Exactly. Exactly. Should be looked into. Of the yes. Because of medical um, care. Indeed. They should provide enough to cater to the people. Especially scarcity of diagnostic services, you know. It's, it's not something that we want to hear. Yes, about it's not just next. It's not, only, not only cancer. I'm sure it's the same thing with kidney. You see the rate at which and I just have kidney failures now. So that means that the people cannot even, because if you can't go to the private hospitals for dialysis, then that is the instant death. Um, so, and that in itself is a, it's a very, very terrible. Okay, so you have uh, anxiety in Benue as Cameroon sheds excess water from Lado Dam. We're still having this in the news. And then you have Shiite PFN differ as Hamas Israel conflict drags into third day. Well, the Lado Dam is not uh, it's no longer news. Um, one is I've been given months back that Nigerians should be able to ask his people to that they're going to release uh, water into uh, into the dam, and the Nigerians should be able to do the need for it. And the uh, Nema and the federal government have warned uh, people within those uh, riverine area to be able to move. Up or up, and uh, you ask yourself, where are they going to move to? You say people should move. Where should they move to? And uh, that is a problem. So, um, but if the water has not been released or it's going to be released, then people within that uh, river, that area, especially people around 
those local jar um, and other surrounding uh, states within those uh, area. And they've been two times with that number that we should be able to dredge our own part of the of our own data and also build and accompany them to be able to absorb most of this water that um, the Cameroonians are going to release, but if they nothing has been done about it. So every year we continue to talk about Cameroon releasing their waters and every part of Nigeria and being flooded. That in itself also has some economic effect, in, in that you come to realize that when this water is released, um, most farms, especially within the uh, North Central, Benue and the rest of just talk about Benue now, most of these farms will be flooded. And that is a, those, that Benue is the food basket of the nation. And you look at the Benue, Taraba, and some of the states in the north. If it, that happens, then that also is going to affect our output in terms of food. Uh, uh, food. And that also in, in, inform the high cost of uh, prices of uh, food items, perishables uh, uh, from that part of Nigeria. So it's a total. Uh, is a thing that we should be looking into the various ministries, Minister of Environment, Minister of Water Resources, and other federal ministries to, in conjunction with the state government, try to find a solution to this problem so that we don't continue to have this issue every year, year in, year out. Okay, and marketers grown six subsidized FX as FG offers 90 import licenses. 90 import I'm licenses. Good. How much the dollar now? Me and me ask. Now where they use dollar? <laughs> now you be the Ghana. We they look your face. How much is the dollar? I don't know. I don't know. But, the last uh, we heard it was the last we heard it was one thousand one ten at the black market. One, well, black yeah, market. It was about one twenty one twenty in the black market. Mm -hmm. And the uh, problem of the the fact is that some people are mopping up the dollars now. Some people are mopping up. I know that some people are just using their money, especially they are so-called big men. Some are buying the, in, in the million, some drop 100 million to buy $100,000. I don't know what they are keeping it for. So it's it becoming a problem, and we're having a serious short. Mm -hmm. But we continue to have this that short one. If we're not able to do the right, if we're not able to export more to earn more, and that is what we've always said the time with time. The only way you can be able to earn more dollars for foreign exchange is by exporting more so that you can earn more. Exactly. That's the, the federal government, the CBN or the federal government, or ZNMPC, recently told us that they are going to get about uh, is it $3 billion from um, from one country, I can't remember now, they used to question if you know the um, the swap, the yes. oil crude swap. Yeah, and, and that, that money, Once we get it, it's going to cushion the effect on the dollars. We didn't say cushion effect. Um, there has been a rise for about 45 percent 40 to 45 percent in the price of dollars since the government came in and that is not looking good at all that is not looking good at all so um those the, those in the man manufacturing association of nigeria are crying they said that they cannot be good to they cannot be good to breed um people are being sacked on a daily basis because the companies are not producing enough and those that even they produce they can't even sell they cannot compete with the time. They cannot let So a lot of problems within our economy. In and, fact, man um, says they are having the toughest time in history. That is it. That is it. And uh, the president, the vice president, uh, Shetima, is the head of the economic team of this government. And I hope that um, we'll be able to put a very, very, not just inviting um, governors every time to this neck meeting to look at the issue of it. They should be able to put a very, very holistic economic team, just like Obasanjo did. Obasanjo was so creative in picking his economic team. And that was what they were able to achieve, what they achieved during your time. I hope this government can be able to put that. We have somebody in the Ministry of Finance now who is supposed to be a technocrat. We've gotten somebody in Central Bank who is a technocrat. We've gotten other people um, assembled by the president. I hope they'll be able to come together and just give us a solution to the problem as it were. But as it is, if we are not doing the right thing, which is producing enough and exporting more, then this, this dollar will continue to go down the way it is. Okay, thank you, Chris. This is a good place to end the story. And we do hope that in, your, in the Southeast that they will do something about the health sector so that they can fix, Don't worry. make things Don't worry. And let me, govern, and let me govern so that I can start implementing my own. Chris for governor, Imo State. <laughs> I'm your number one <laughs> fan, Chris. Thank you so much for your time yeah. on Off the Press. Thank you, very Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day ahead. You too. Chris Kendewando, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, has joined us here in Lagos on Off the Press.
We'll be back in a moment with our first hot topic. Can Nigeria export good products? Can we export refined products and make profits? Is the subsidy up or is it back? 